If you want to readjust, I'll give you a, a second here. But thank you all very much for joining us here today. Good morning. Today, I am suspending $30 billion in investment activity from Wells Fargo and the use of the company as a broker-dealer for the purchase of investments. Wells Fargo's predatory and illegal banking practices require a strong response. As the state's, as the state's chief banking officer and chief investment officer, I'm responsible for overseeing nearly a trillion dollars trillion dollars in annual investment activity. It is my duty to execute these responsibilities in a highly professional and ethical manner, always striving for transparency, integrity, and preservation of public trust. My role to safeguard the state's money is something I take very seriously and will continue to shine a light on unfair, illegal actions by companies. According to the consent order issued by the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Wells Fargo took advantage of consumers by secretly opening over 2 million unauthorized deposit, credit card, and debit card and online banking accounts from 2011 to 2015. During this five-year period, the company extracted millions of dollars in fraudulent fees and damaged many cus customers' credit records, forcing them to pay higher interest rates on loans. Their illegal actions to meet sales targets and compensation incentives is downright shameful. And it gets worse. The $1.9 trillion financial services company also violated the federal rights of active duty service members. Last week, the U.S. Justice Department penalized Wells Fargo for the unlawful repossessions of vehicles of members of our armed services without giving them or the courts the proper notice, while also charging more than the 6% interest rate limitation. With the dramatic failure of corporate controls and oversight, I have also ordered an audit to determine if, in addition to their other illegal activities, Wells Fargo violated Illinois' unclaimed property laws. It's important that we make sure Illinois' consumers get what may be owed to them. Similar audits of life insurance companies have identified more than $550 million that should have been paid to beneficiaries here in Illinois. Earlier this year, due to our steadfast commitment to get consumers what is owed to them, Radio Shack surrendered $140,000 in uncashed rebates owed to more than 5,000 Illinois residents. And Sprint paid $2.3 million and provided the names of 32,000 customers who were still owed rebates. According to Wells Fargo, they serve about one in three households in the United States. Now, that's a lot of people that have trusted them for decades in their banking, insurance, and investment needs. But this isn't the first time that Illinois has brought forth issues concerning Wells Fargo. In 2012, thanks to Attorney General Lisa Madigan and the U.S. Department of Justice, a lawsuit against Wells Fargo over discriminatory lending practices resulted in $175 million joint settlement for consumers. At the time of the settlement, it was estimated more than 3,000 Illinois borrowers were victims of discrimination by Wells Fargo brokers. The settlement provided restitution for African American and Latino borrowers who were steered into risky subprime loans at a higher rate for their loans than white bar borrowers. Wells Fargo is a big financial player in Illinois, and I hope to send the message that their unscrupulous practices are not welcomed and will not be tolerated. In addition to the suspension of investment activity, all existing relationships will be put under review to assess contractual terms and obligations. The moratorium on investment activity with Wells Fargo will remain in effect for one year. After this period, a reevaluation of Wells Fargo corporate governance practices will be conducted. I want to thank you very much for being here today. I want to thank the members who have, the people who have joined me here today in front of the podium. I want to give them an opportunity to come up and speak. First up is my former colleague, Senator Jackie Collins. She is the chairman of the Senate Financial Institutions Committee and has been a longtime champion of consumers in the state of Illinois. Thank Senator you. Collins. Good morning. Good morning. 
My name is spelled Jacqueline, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E, Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S. I am proud to, today to stand with Treasurer Ferrix, and I want to commend him for his leadership in fighting for Illinois consumers against corporate fraud and greed. What is even more outrageous than the conduct recently brought to light is the fact that we've heard this story before. Financial institutions claiming they're too big to be held accountable, while low-level employees take the blame, high-level executives evade the consequences, and working families suffer from the misdeeds of others. We find it disheartening and infuriating that Wells Fargo continued to quietly but blatantly defraud its customers, even in this new era of stricter oversight. Treasurer Ferrix has made the right decision, not allowing the investment of its taxpayers' hard-earned money to enable corporate irresponsibility on the backs of the poor and the middle class. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Collins. We also are joined by a champion in the Illinois House of Representatives, a fighter for consumers, and Representative Will Guzardi. Thank you, Treasurer. Good morning. My name is Will Guzardi, G-U-Z-Z-A-R-D-I. I'm State Representative of the 39th District on the northwest side of Chicago. I'm also Treasurer Frerich's body double, in case you guys are doing interviews <laughs> later. Um, I want to thank the Treasurer for uh, bringing us all here today and for taking this bold and important action. Wells Fargo's latest fraud is simply a bridge too far. Um, they've been caught discriminating against African American and Latino borrowers. They've been caught discriminating against people with disabilities. This new revelation, uh, frankly, their hand has been caught in the cookie jar one too many times. And the state of Illinois and our taxpayers, we're not going to continue investing in a company that treats low income and working families this way. Uh, I think what Treasurer Frerix is doing here today is a critically important message that the profit motive of the financial sector in this state is out of control, that they are taking advantage of working people in order to pad corporate bottom lines. And unfortunately, this is symptomatic of a deeper problem in our society, where lower income and middle class families have seen income stagnate and cost of livings rise. Uh, and we're told that simply there's no, there's no answer to this problem. While meanwhile, profits for the biggest corporations and the wealth of the very wealthiest individuals continue to grow unchecked. I think we need to restore balance in our society. We need working people to be able to see their incomes rise. We need corporate greed to be checked by a strong hand of government. That's what Treasurer Frerichs uh, is doing here today. That's what we intend to do in the legislature. We've worked closely with Treasurer Frerichs in, in going after some bad corporate actors so far in my two years in the legislature, and I look forward to continuing that cause uh, as we carry forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Guzardi. Uh, as Representative Guzardi pointed out, a lot of these individuals who were the victims of this are poorer families and senior citizens, and it's important that someone stands up on their behalf. We have a representative from a Grassroots Collaborative, uh, Amisha Patel. Amisha? Good morning. My name is Amisha Patel. That's A-M-I-S-H-A. -S Last name is P-A-T-E-L. We applaud this action by Treasurer Frerix. Grassroots Collaborative has been working to take on Wall Street banks for some time now. Wells Fargo and other banks have been defrauding customers without any real consequences for too long. We need more elected officials to step up and say we'll, be not, we'll stop doing business with banks that behave illegally or unethically. Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo defrauded its customers by lying to them about their accounts. They have wrecked employees and customers' lives, but they have also wrecked public institutions as well. Wells Fargo and other big banks like Bank of America have made over $500 million off of toxic interest rate swaps with Chicago public schools. We have these same deals at the state of Illinois as well. So just like banks open secret accounts for customers in order to generate fees, they also have sold these bad deals to taxpayers without telling us about the risks in order to make their millions. Treasurer Ferrix is sending a strong message to banks that if they steal from their customers, they are not welcome in our state. 
the treasurer is leading the way by taking economic action. We hope that Governor Rahner will also follow suit and be just as aggressive about holding banks accountable that are in part responsible for wrecking the state's economy and definitely wrecking the lives of low-income families across the state. It's time to end the lack of consequences for Wall Street executives who reap hundreds of millions of dollars while employees, customers, and communities suffer. It's time for us to fight back against the greed that is wrecking working families. It's time for us to tell big banks no more. Thank you, Amisha. Uh, we're also joined today by Representative from Citizen Action Illinois, William McNary. Thank you for being here, William. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is William McNary, MC, capital N A R Y. I'm the co director of Citizen Action Illinois, and we stand in support of Treasurer Frederick's action to cut Wells Fargo off from billions of investment dollars for defrauding consumers. It's recently obviously come to light that Wells Fargo opened two million deposit accounts and credit cards and debit cards and online bank accounts that customers never applied for, which allowed Wells Fargo to earn millions and millions of dollars in fraudulent fees while at the same time demanding customer credit uh, damaging customers' credit ratings and forcing them to pay higher interest on loans. But let's be clear, this is a bank with a history of discrimination and risky subprime loans to black and Latino borrowers. And in a world where the wealthy, the well-connected, and the well-to-do continue to profit at the misery of others, in a world where billionaires pay no taxes, the, gov the people demand accountability. Now, we can't make uh, Wells Fargo CEO John Strump step down and return all of the money that he and his employees made while creating these fake accounts. And, and we can't make the Department of Justice investigate Wells Fargo CEO John Strump for criminal prosecution. But we can't, what we can do is to make sure that consumer taxpayer dollars under the control of the Treasurer's Office will not be used to continue to reward the egregious conduct of a serial bank offender ripping off customers. We should be rewarding banks that provide low interest small business loans in urban and, and rural areas. We should be rewarding banks that provide mortgage relief to those people whose mortgages are underwater. We should be rewarding those banks who make low interest loans to those customers who need their homes. And so we applaud Treasurer Ferricks and his efforts to send a clear message to Wells Fargo and these corporations that they will not be allowed to profit from Illinois taxpayers if they continue to engage in these egregious anti-consumer practices. Thank you. Thank you, William. We're also joined by representative of the Woodstock Institute, uh, Ms. Dory Rand. Good morning. I'm Dory Rand, D-O-R-Y-R-A-N-D. I'm president of Woodstock Institute. For over 43 years, we've advocated for safe and affordable financial products and services. So we strongly support Treasurer Frerich's decision to pull out from uh, working with Wells Fargo and to try to help refund money to victims of its abuses. It's bad enough that Wells Fargo rewarded uh, aggressive account openings and sales of toxic products like deposit advances and overdrafts that trap consumers in debt. But what made that even worse is the fact that Wells Fargo uses forced arbitration clauses and waivers of class actions in its consumer contracts so that even when victims of these abuses tried to sue them in court, their cases were thrown out and the violations were allowed to continue for years. So we call on Wells Fargo not only to stop the abusive account openings and the other uh, issues that they were charged with by the CFPB and the OCC and the LA attorney, but to also stop using forced arbitration clauses and class action waivers in its contracts. Thank you. Thank you all very much for joining me here today, uh, and I think uh, we'll all be willing to take any questions the media might have. Uh, but Treasurer, can you explain the math? I'm not quite sure I understand the $30 billion. We, we don't even have $30 billion, it seems, to spend on anything. Yeah, sure. So this is investment activity. We purchase repurchase agreements, commercial paper, other investment instruments of short duration. So this money will turn over frequently in investment activity. Why is it that Wells Fargo um, enjoys that? Are they the sole... Is, it is not exclusively Wells Fargo. We work with many different financial institutions. They're available on our website. 
I think there are about 25 different companies that are qualified to be working this, on this. So the money will go to other companies who are the lowest bidders. I still don't get the math of it. I don't get the 30 billion. Explain where the cash is coming from, and you can generate that much activity through Wells Fargo. So we have over a trillion dollars in investment activity over the course of a year. Because if we have, let's say, $10 to invest, some days we'll invest it in a overnight uh, agreement, and that next day you can invest another overnight. And by the end of the week, you've had $70 in investment activity over $10 in investments. Mike? So over the course of a year, it uh, is reinvested numerous times. Mike, in dollars, as a result of your action only, how much in fees is Wells Fargo losing? So Wells Fargo, when they win, they are the lowest bidder. And they determine how much uh, they can take. We're not able to quantify exactly how much is in there. But in 30 billions of dollars, it is fair to say this is millions of dollars that will cost them. Do you, so, do you have any accounting, like um, how much you paid Wells Fargo, like last year? Yeah, last year in terms of investment activity, it was $30 billion. What yeah. did they earn? About October, from October how much 1st. How much you paid to Wells Fargo in fees yeah, what did they last earn year? That? Off of, off of that, so we go out to market, and the lowest bidder takes this, uh, gets the work. Uh, there are other financial institutions so out there that we work I with. That, but so we don't pay them directly fees, and when we make these in, have this investment activity, they get, they build in uh, a few basis points that they make off of this. So you don't know how much they're making? No. Off of the state of It's millions of dollars. I'm still not getting the 30 billion. I totally agree with him. So, is that how much Wells Fargo is managing or being the broker dealer of? These are broker dealers. So, this is uh, other investment activities that we are, other investments that we are making. They are the broker dealer, or on their repurchase agreements or commercial paper. And this 30 billion is all that uh, Wells Fargo is. This is investments that has been brokered or purchased through uh, Wells Fargo. And they get all, all in all. We've had over about a trillion dollars in investment activity over the last year. Right, and they get a cut of this thirty billion, and you expect that's like millions of dollars. Yes. Can you quantify in tens of millions of dollars or a few million dollars? I mean, it's millions of dollars. We wouldn't say it's tens of millions of dollars, but millions of dollars. Do you want to expand this uh, moratorium to the pension fund? So we have written letters to the Illinois State Board of Investment and to Gombe. Uh, calling on them to review their work with Wells Fargo as well. Now, what we're also doing in, in addition to the investment activity is we're making sure that we're going to conduct an audit of the work they've done. The Illinois Treasurer is in charge of unclaimed property. So when an investment account sits dormant for five years, they're supposed to cheat that money to the state so that we can get that money to the rightful owners. We believe that it's possible when they created these new accounts and charged new fees, they believe that might have reset the clock on sheeting that money to the state of Illinois. And so that is the other big step we are taking today. So you said, uh, you're, I'll say, to clarify, you're suspending the $30 billion in investment activity with Wells Fargo. So who's going to be doing it? So you can go to our website. Uh, we believe in transparency. There are about 25 different firms that we do business with, and they're all listed on our website. And does the $30 billion include, you know, you mentioned they're not going to be a broker-dealer for you for at least a year. For a year, yes. And we'll the, review their practices afterwards. We want to make sure that they're putting proper internal controls in place. I was going to ask you, does that include the existing accounts that are under review? The existing accounts. You said all existing all existing or under review? We have other uh, contracts we have with Wells Fargo under review. So, the, so the, but, the millions that Wells Fargo will not be earning, other firms will, will be, be earning? Yes. And we believe that it's important to have strong internal controls in place. What this recent story has shown, and Wells Fargo executives have admitted, is they did not have strong internal controls in place. And if we want to be proper safeguards of our money, we want to make sure the financial institutions we work with um, have proper internal controls. When you say um, other contracts with Wells Fargo are under review, what other contracts does the state have with Wells Fargo? Yeah, we also have that available on our website, um, and my chief investment officer, Rodrigo Garcia, who's right next to you, can provide you with those contracts as well. They are, under, they are under review. Those are things we're contractually obligated uh, to perform with them. This is the first step we can take today. What percentage of investments went through? Wells Fargo, out of those 25 firms that you spoke of? 
So in terms of our investment activity over the course of a year is around a trillion dollars and Wells Fargo uh, about 30 billion dollars. So you know that Wells Fargo received this 30 billion or was responsible for 30 billion but you're not sure how much the state spent with Wells Fargo. Exactly. Yeah. So we do not write checks directly to Wells Fargo or make these investments. They are the broker dealer or purchasing repurch rep uh, or buying repurchase agreements or commercial paper through them. They price in uh, some money for them but that is not explicit in the transactions right, and, and they're the lowest bidder when they have won this in the past those other 25 firms uh, will make the market and we think this is not going to cost the state any additional money I'm just wondering how you came to the 30 billion number uh, because that is the amount of financial transactions investment activities through Wells Fargo between October 1st of last year and September 30th of this year does this affect any bond underwriting at all is this any this does not but that is something that will be under review as well we encourage the Governor's Office of Management and Budget and the Illinois State Board of Investment to review their relationships with Wells Fargo as well. So you have the ability to know how much they're making by looking at all those contracts that you just don't know right now. Yeah, I don't have an exact number, but we know it's in the millions of dollars. And can you no explain question. again the unclaimed property aspect? Of sure. So when a bank holds money for an individual and the account remains dormant for five years, it can remain dormant because someone has moved and they've forgotten about it, uh, maybe someone has passed on, the banks don't get to keep that money because no one is claiming it. Our auditors go in and the banks will turn over money to the state and it's my responsibility as state treasurer to get that money to the rightful owners or their heirs. And how much are we talking about Wells Fargo has to pay out to consumers in Illinois for that? Oh, for that, that is something we're going to conduct an audit and see how much is out there. We don't know. So if it's possible, it's possible that when they subdivide these accounts, when they open up new accounts and charge fees, that they said that restarted the clock on that five years. So it's potential, there may be millions of dollars that was owed to be turned over to the state to be given to Illinois residents they may say uh, they didn't have to because there was activity. Not activity initiated by their customers. And so we're going to send our auditors in and see if there are perhaps millions of dollars more that belongs to Illinois citizens. Have you spoken? And this, is, and this is in line with the other things my office does mm -hmm. over the last year in fighting on behalf of consumers. Mm -hmm. Whether it be uh, our settlement we reach with Radio Shack or Sprint or our actions with life insurance mm -hmm. companies in the state of Illinois. Have you spoken with Wells Fargo executives, and if so, what was that exchange like? Yeah. We've reached out to them and let them know that we were stopping uh, our investment activity and putting a moratorium in place for a year. Who did you speak with? Uh, we reached out to two different executives, and uh, my chief investment officer actually spoke to them to notify them. Well, what you. are their names? What are their names? Uh, my chief executive office, my chief no, investment I mean the Wells Fargo executives. Um, I don't have their names right now. Thank you, everybody. I have a question for you from the podium, if I may. Sure. Oh. It's, it's, it's off topic. It's not about the, the initiative. Okay. Did you happen to hear Rudy Giuliani this weekend defending Trump not paying any taxes? I did. What, what were your thoughts when you heard the words coming out of his mouth? You know, I think it's... I sat in a uh, meeting with some African-American and Latino voters, drop-off voters, and the words that they used to uh, describe the upcoming election season is they're sad, they're discouraged. And some are angry. And the word that came over up again and again and again in both of those sessions was accountability. How is it that when we're on the low end, whether it's red light cameras and, or whether it's crimes that we didn't commit that we go to jail for, that we are supposedly held accountable and then people who are rich and well-connected and pay no taxes, how come they are smart? We know that that is not right. We believe that those people who benefit from this country, the wealth, who got wealthy on the backs of the working people in America, should pay their fair share of taxes. That's what the American people believe. That's what we believe. And that's why Donald Trump it, uh, should show how much he's made in tax. He should release his tax returns so we can begin to hold him accountable. But, but politically, could, were you shaking your head at the notion of trying to defend this all weekend long? Absolutely. I mean, again, it's, it's indefensible. Let's be clear, if you are rich and you get away with paying no taxes, you're smart. And if you're poor or middle class and try not to pay your taxes, then you're a mooch or you go to jail. That is just not right. It, it is it's indescribable. 
it is politically, it's, it's almost political malpractice. And, and what effect do you think this will have on the race? What, on the race? What do you, the fact that they're sustaining this defense of not paying federal, what, what effect do you think they'll have on the race? Well, you know, I wish we could be talking about uh, making sure that the wealthy pay their fair share so that people who need jobs can get jobs. I wish we could be talking about making sure that those people who uh, claim to purport to want to ru uh, run the government at least provide some kind of income to make sure that government runs properly. So the fact of the matter is that we should be talking about things that uplift people, that make sure that people who are discouraged and who are sad about this economy, that this government can work for them. This government should begin to work for everybody, not just a wealthy few. And I think we have a, an opportunity this year to at least send a message politically that we will vote for somebody, or those bodies, some bodies who will stand for us and not just stand for themselves. Thank you.